the real Nani in Didi Osama story documentary. I think bro did a documentary on K Flat. It was good. On so. July 9th, 2022, a 14 year old boy was stabbed in the subway station in New York City. After a teenager was stabbed to death, a 15 year old boy has been charged with killing another teen on a subway. The death of Ethan Reyes has left a massive impact on the drill music scene, oh, so, so skyrocketing his brother's career and even having a TikTok dance that mocks his passing go viral. But the story wild. behind this unfortunate event lies the truth about the deadly gang wars that are happening in Harlem and the Bronx. Mm. What do you think was like the first moment where you started getting like a lot of traction? When my little brother died, when his death caught the attention of mad people. Based on a tragic truth story, a documentary by Publish X. First time I heard Naughty, bro, he was like, I'm gonna be a rapper now. I was like, what? Who was that? David Reyes, who we now know as Didi Osama, was born and raised in Harlem, New York, alongside his five siblings, one sister and four brothers, but two of them specifically played a huge role in who he is today. Among those brothers was Ethan, who was later known as Nadi Osama, and then there's Jay Star Bala, who was their older brother. When it comes to Didi Osama's upbringing, you have to understand the impact that Nadi had on him. Although a year apart, the two were basically like twins, and they did everything together. They moved around a lot to various homes in Harlem while growing up. Although they never stayed in one place for too long, to them Sugar Hill was always home, and this is where they would make a name for themselves. Their mom was working in real estate while trying to provide for all of her children, and their father was absent, but they did have a stepdad who tried to fill that role. Despite this, they always had each other, and there was always one mm -hmm. thing they shared a common interest in, that was rapping. But far before any of them would step into a booth, they were already experiencing the trauma of growing up in a rough environment. Out outside, oh punch and push. Me and the bros is bugging. Niggas is bugging when you was younger. By the time Didi and Naughty were in their early teens, they had both already jumped off the porch. We're talking about 12 and 13 years old on the streets of Sugar Hill, smoking weed and raining havoc, all while repping a set known as OY. OY is a gang said to have been created by a man named Country Kane as some knew him. It's rumored he was a prolific drug dealer at one point. He had ties to just about every rapper from Harlem and was the creator of the slogan, Sugar Hill Get The Money, that you still hear to this day. Needless to say, Country Kane would not live to see what's become of Sugar Hill and the drill scene it's now involved in. On a Sunday morning in 2018, around 2am, he was eating at a chicken spot when a hooded man barged in and shot him in the head. According to the authorities, this murder is still unsolved to this day, or it's possible the streets have already taken care of it. But this is just one yeah, day. Back to the song. Yeah, yeah, there are countless yeah. more that are the reason for the many I've seen that that active with in Harlem and the the video, so. today, creating a never-ending uh, cycle of retaliation and hatred. This is the environment Didi and Nadi grew up in, so like many others, they were desensitized at a young age to the consequences of this lifestyle until they experienced it themselves, and music quickly became their therapy. Didi, Nadi, and J-Star would all start rapping in a homemade studio at their grandma's house. I'm not gonna lie, when I first like tried music, I was like 12. Yeah, I was dead like 12. Eventually, J-Star got his own place, so they would upgrade their equipment and start recording there. J-Star was the first one to start rapping and releasing music in 2020, but he wasn't breaking through on anything major. This was inspiring for Didi and Nadi though, as they were watching their older brother and learning the game. It's also important to mention around this time, two other names started popping up. Those two people were Edot Baby and Sugar Hill Dot. Edot Baby was already making a name for himself online. Being young and already pulling came. in a substantial amount of views, Edot Baby was paving the way D. for the younger known. generation, and he already had some clout. Seeing his success only made them want to hop in the booth as well, and he showed them love by featuring them in some of his music videos before they were known. This would later down the road make a huge impact, but we'll get to that later. Shortly after, Nadi started recording songs, and following suit, Didi joined them. Together, they agreed to take this music shit serious, and if they were gonna do it, they were gonna go all the way. They were ready to knock down anything in their path, but it wouldn't be easy. Like, it was like, nah, I wanna rap with you. Nah. Oh. Didn't did start rapping until 2023, I think. Or 2022, my bad. 2023 is crazy. 2022, that was his first song. He may have sung like one or two songs before then, but Keem was definitely picking up. Move Look dropped in August, I think. August, September. He definitely had a, a way bigger buzz than D-Dot. All gonna go out. 
Oh, just gonna call out. When Nadi and Didi hopped in the studio, they made it clear from the start they wanted smoke with everybody. Although young, the two were talking like grown men on tracks, often mocking the death of their ops. I said, niggas, they get out their way. You or your homie get shot in your face. Yeah, did I did. Nah, I wouldn't say that. He, he had notoriety, but. On a song titled What Let's You Want to Do, rapping Nani took shots was, at K Flock and it set Sev's idea away with these lyrics. As we know, at the time, K Flock was blowing up and was arguably the biggest rapper coming out of the Bronx. But that didn't stop the 14 year old from dissing him. Later on their song Dead Ops, they said, He can get shot if he hop like a bunny. A diss to the YGs. And if you don't know who the YGs are, you might be aware of their most popular rapper, D Thing. Needless to say, Didi, Nadi, and D-Dot were all on the come up together, even referring to themselves as the three young demons of Sugar Hill. Yo, we still the three young demons. I give a fuck. Still the three demons. Nadi with us. Still, still with us. Three demons still. Their views were already hitting in the 100k range, and the shock factor of how young and wild they were was what caught people's attention. Video mm, 100k in three days. Like, what's next? D-Dot shit was before the whole situation. Hey. Nah, real shit. Mills. Oh, Next shit. is Mills. But if beefing with two yeah, of the yeah. Bronx's most notable that's, rappers, that's K Flock and Deacon, wasn't them, enough, he, was he also had issues with the group face. known as 41. 41 isn't a gang, but rather a group of rappers, and the story goes like this 41 ended up linking up with a guy known as Blockwork. Blockwork was an OY member like Didi and Naughty. The problem was, he was allegedly labeled as a snitch for ratting on his friends, and they didn't like that they were still hanging around him. This led to Naughty and Didi recording a song titled 41K addressing the situation, insulting 41 for the link up, but keep in mind they didn't release it right away. Then on the same song he mentions a clear insult to an OG's affiliate named Smelly and YG's member Raw G's. Smelly was just 17 years old when oh, he was no, killed geez. over a dispute over a bike, unfortunately being stabbed 14 times in his chest and dying. The other person mentioned was Rajiz who had a similar story. While getting into an Uber to go to a studio session, Rajiz was killed at a red light. Two kids on scooters rolled up and shot him in the back seat, killing him instantly. As I mentioned, the song was recorded but actually hadn't been released yet. Before it came out, unfortunately, Nadi Osama would share a similar fate to the very people he mocked. Approximately 3 p.m., officers from Transit District 3 responded to a 911 call for a fight. Officers encountered a 14 year old male bleeding from his stomach. On July 11, 2022, Nadi and Didi were out and about in Harlem. At some point, Didi told Nadi he wanted to go back yeah, to the block. I, ain't gonna lie. I don't know how we got OGs out of that because if you listen to TJ's shit, TJ be, be saying smelly a lot. Nadi insisted on staying out. Around that big 3 p.m., Nadi was walking nearby the 137th Street College Station subway entrance. That's when he spotted Kelvin Martinez, who's also known as rapper K Dot and a known op to Nadi. Fuck. It... Allegedly, Nadi was the aggressor in this situation. He, he, like, some of the pictures, like, and videos he's showing, is just, like, all the way off. And he approached K Dot with a broomstick. Inevitably, the two would begin to fight and it spilled into the subway station. Nadi cornered K-Dot and beat him with the broomstick, but at some point, K-Dot pulled out a knife and stabbed Nadi in the stomach. While feeling the effects of the adrenaline, Nadi then threw K-Dot into the train tracks before attempting to run for the exit. After losing too much blood, he collapsed on the scene. He was transported to Mount Sinai Hospital and treated for stab wounds, but he wouldn't make it. He was just 14 years old. K-Dot would be apprehended just hours later after also being treated for wounds to his back and hip. The weapons used in the altercation were seized by law enforcement and used as evidence, and K-Dot was being charged for the murder. The death of Nadi made a huge impact on the whole Sugar Hill community, but especially for his brothers Didi and J-Star. After hearing the news of their brother, Didi stated he didn't even want to rap anymore, but because he knew how much it meant to Nadi, he had to keep going and keep his brother's name alive. You know, ever since his passing, you you just stop kind of caring about like being a rapper or like from the famous. suburbs of Nebraska. Like you gotta like I don't care about it. Gotta do it. I mean, I gotta do it for bro, but it's just that it don't phase me. Like money, money, the fame, all of this shit don't phase me. It don't feel like it's how I was supposed to feel. Okay, so I'm supposed to feel good about it. I ain't supposed to be with bro. It's not with bro, so I don't feel good about it. I'm a 
I'ma spin through the seven. I'ma catch me a me, catch me. Get left in the lobby, catch me. Uh-uh-uh. I'ma tell him to run. Now everything had a whole new meaning for him, and this was the beginning of their new slogan, Everything for Naughty. While Sugar Hill mourned his passing, his ops wasted no time in dissing him. Surprisingly, K-Dot, who took his life, was not one of those people. Even trying to pay his respects in this video by stating he doesn't want to be known for Naughty's death. I'm gonna make one thing known. I don't got it this baby bro to get for me to get fame. I don't want to be known to, to do that you are. That be corny to me. I'm not even going to do all that. On the I other hand, the group named 41 that they had problems with even took it as far as releasing a song titled Naughty Bob. Not only was this a diss to his death, but it even included its own dance with the same name. The Naughty Bop went viral, gaining millions of plays, even becoming a dance trend on TikTok, before I think many people actually knew the meaning behind it. Average Joes were online doing a dance that imitated Naughty being stabbed in the stomach, with zero awareness of the disrespect. Of course, Dougie B and Seth's IDOA joined in on the trend too. All this attention around Naughty's death would spike his reputation, as like with other rappers. When you pass, now everyone wants to check out your music. His name, alongside Didi, would start to go viral, and Didi talked about how this made him feel guilty. They were already on the path to becoming stars, but with his brother's death, it sped that process up by 10 times. A blessing and a curse. God really just cursed me. Gave me a gift at the same shit. time, but... Not only that, but he now lives with the guilt that maybe if he hadn't left that day, his brother might still be around. With the spotlight now on him, Didi released two songs in tribute to his brother, and both of them gained millions of views. Just like they had set out to do, but at what cost? DDOT would also see a massive spike in success around the same time, and together with Didi, they would keep releasing music as their popularity increased daily. Keep in mind, this is all within six months of even starting their rap careers. But even after losing his brother to the violence, Didi is not exactly a victim himself, and he continued to mock his ops deaths as well. After one named Matty G supposedly passed away from an overdose, DDOT and Didi were on Instagram Live with 5,000 people watching, dancing and celebrating his death like it was a birthday party. Dude, that shit didn't make no type of sense, bro. You ain't got no, like, yo, bro, that's in a whole different part of the city. That's a whole different borough. That's someone that you barely even knew, bro. And the fact that you even did that, bro, it's unfortunate what happened later that day. But it's like, bro, you reap what you sow, bro. It's He all in my sleeve, that dead. All of this just to later find out that Matty G's had actually trolled them and was in fact alive and well. At this point, every and then later that night, that same day, that's when Ida, the whole Ida situation happened. He passed away. That's crazy, bro. It was just laughing and shit. And now he took a loss on his side. Everybody was moving crazy, and despite crazy. the money and fame that was being earned, in reality, none of them were safe in their own city. But things only kept getting worse. If losing his brother wasn't enough, just months later, tragedy would strike again when his, was really the same day as the Mandy his good friend E.Dot right. Baby also passed away. Remember, E.Dot was the first young kid to put on for the drill movement, and he was the first one to give these guys part of his own spotlight before Harlem they had any movement. clout. In addition, he stood by Didi and supported him after Naughty's death, I'm so this especially hurt him. The details behind E.Dot Baby's passing are still unclear. It's said he took his own life because of the weight he was holding on to, but many people don't believe that. I still don't believe because I was with bro a couple of days before that. My means is lit. Why would he want the off smoking on him, bro? My son is really a lit. He the first loan in drill period from Harlem to the Bronx to be lit. He the first to get a deal and get 40000 My son did not do that, bro. Adding more confusion, Edot's niece later came out saying his girlfriend may have stolen his chain, money, and gun, just adding more suspicion to what actually might have happened. Regardless, Didi Osama was mourning the death of two people close to him while still trying to balance out all the fame. Dropping track after track, Didi inevitably gained the attention of a few record labels who were now calling and offering bags of money for his signature. This is all without dropping a full length project. Since then he's moved his mom into a new home where his family can hopefully escape the violence. In this interview from a few months ago, Didi spoke about wanting to work with Lil Durk and Lil Zay Osama. I ain't 
the goats. I, I, I personally think it's goats and this rap and shit. Dirk, Jose or something. Even trolling his fans in another video saying he already had a song with Dirk coming soon. But just know, Didi and Dirkio coming real soon. It was later revealed to be a joke, but just months later, both Dirk and Lil Zay Osama would bring Didi and D-Dot out at their show. Although it's not a feature, it's still crazy to see how far these guys have come in less than a year on the music scene. Now he's selling out his own shows, modeling for Drake's clothing brand and working with mainstream artists, and he plans on dropping his first mixtape this year. After the fame and money, there was a brief moment that Didi and D-Dot had a small falling out. After Rolling Loud posted this image on Instagram showing that Didi would be performing at their show in LA, D-Dot simply replied with some laughing emojis. Fans speculated D-Dot was upset that Didi would accept a show without helping him get on the list as well, which is understandable since the two have been together since the start of this journey. D-Dot addressed this by posting this message stating it's between him and his brother, but shortly after, Didi posted a video that said otherwise. In the end, the misunderstanding was quickly resolved, and they have since made it clear that Thomas they're going to take this to the top together. Now that they're both in positions to win, we can hope that they're able to stay out of trouble and focus on making money for everyone around them. From the streets of Sugar Hill to the big stage, they really did everything they said they were going to do for Nadia. Nadia, chill. That's crazy to say, bro. Keep playing, do what you want to do, do what you love, gangsters. You want to yeah, rap, bro. rap. You know, do that, do that, feel me? Do whatever you love. Keep your head up, gang, girl, A lot of shit going on. See who the rapper Chuck Cup. That's crazy. It was a cool vid. A couple mishaps, but not that bad. You know, I was really the glue of this shit. I feel like it, bro. D-Dot and D-D beefing. Fucking Sugar Hill and DD beefing. Fucking OYGs broke up. Everybody just falling apart.